Hi there folks, welcome back to Rich Reviews. So on the latest of what I want to review for you guys, I saw on Thursday night, yes I know it's that was Thursday, and you're getting on this on Saturday, it is Godzilla King of the Monsters, and it's been four years since we've seen Godzilla on our movie screens, although I have on the channel reviewed Shin Godzilla, which is a reboot of the Japanese version, and three anime Godzilla films that I would say to you are not worth seeing at all costs. This time around, Michael Doherty replaces Gareth Edwards, who dropped out early on in the process. And I think a lot of people here are going for King Kong vs. Godzilla. And here's the thing, folks. I never considered the Godzilla franchise to be a director's medium because, let's face it, it's all spectacle. So, so Monarch is under increasing pressure from the government, by the military, and the larger populace at large. Do something about the Titans and Godzilla in particular. As always, man wants to be dominant species on this planet. Let's face it, Monarch acts like S.H.I.E.L.D. on occasion because they have all these spectacular airplanes and they have their own way of doing things. They act outside the government interest. Apparently, an eco-terrorist played by Charles Stans decides to do something about it and he wants, basically, there to be less people and have a much more co coexisting nature with the Kaiju, which which, quite frankly, you know, that's never going to happen. So what ends up happening is she kidnaps Farrah Farmigo, along with her daughter, played by Millie Bobby Brown, who I guess they survived the whole release of San Francisco attack. And I guess Farrah Farmiga comes the way around of basically Charles Stanson thinking that when you return a planet to its rightful inhabitants that we are a virus. Because if you actually think about that, she's not entirely wrong. Charles Stanson decides to go to the Off the Books Monarch site that houses one of the greatest Godzilla villains of all time. That is Monster Zero, aka King Ghidorah. And I've always wanted to see what King Ghidorah would look like in completely CGI form. And it's one of the most beloved things I've ever seen. Because, hey, look, three heads are always better than one. And I guess apparently a director thinks of them as siblings. And of course, we also get the debut of Mothra and Rodan in this film. Let me confess, I've always considered Madara to be a really silly character because in reality, it's just a giant moth. And Rodan is basically a giant pterodactyl, if you, if you actually think about it. And let me confess here, folks, I am a fan of those Godzilla films. Of all the cheesy, glorious natures of those Godzilla films. I watched them every Saturday morning when I was a kid. But if there are Easter, if there are Easter eggs in this film, I really didn't get them for some inexplicable reason. And of course, we do get an undercard match between... Madara and Rodan, but the main card match between King Ghidorah and Godzilla is worth the price of a missionary, folks. And here's the thing. I guess these films take more seriously the destruction than those Toho films ever did. And the, the, the Toho films, oh yeah, they just rebuild our cities willy-nilly. And never think about the human cost this film does to a certain degree. We have to evacuate people from the cities in order to get away from the Godzilla films. And oh yes, Kyle Chandler shows up as the ex-husband of the Fear of Farmiga character, and he's been told by Mark, oh yeah, basically your wife invented a machine that can talk to these things or make them docile. It's limited to know that there are at least 17 other creatures buried underneath the Earth. Most of the times, I often thought that God's all film, why are the humans there? Humans are not necessary. Apparently, also, there has been a debate between the Ch Kyle Chandler and the director over what sex Godzilla is. And because the director thinks one way and the Kyle Chandler thinks of another way. Apparently Godzilla has a son in one couple of films. And again, Millie Bobby Brown, don't kill me. I've never seen Stranger Things, so I can't say anything about her film debut. Maybe she has something to become a major movie star anyway. But yeah, we also get Ken Watanabe, Bradley Whitford, Sally Hawkins, and to a lesser extent, uh, O'Shea Jackson Jr. as basically the exposition narrative people. Because really all they do is provide exposition and scientific now, again, with a lot of these Godzilla films, people are incompetent. They have to come think of plan after plan and meeting after meeting to come up with something that oh, yeah, will kill these creatures or at least draw them out to sea, and that way they can rebuild the cities. At least one, at least one military person, played play by David Stratham, who comes back again for this film, says, oh, we have an auction destroyer, which is clearly a reference to the first film. So, think, folks, I love those Godzilla films. I think one of my personal favorite films is Godzilla vs. Biolante, which is basically um, terrorists take some of the Godzilla cells and merge them with a plant. Yes, it's a very goofy idea, but it just absolutely works. And yeah, folks, what I'm going to say about Godzilla King of the Monsters, I'm going to give this 
I'm man airing because I just love seeing this stuff. And here's the King Kong vs. Godzilla in 2020. So folks, Godzilla King of the Monsters, what did you think? Please tell me your favorite Godzilla films in the comment box below, folks. As always, folks, like, comment, subscribe, and reach yourself with knowledge. I'll see you next time, folks. Yes, hooray.